standing next to a wash machine. 78. Loud vacuum cleaner. 98. Blower's about 100. All right, this is the Marshall DSL-5 with the uh, gain halfway up and the volume is cranked. EQ's pretty much in the middle of everything. Marshall is uh, gain set halfway. Volume's just past noon. I think this is going to be picking up for the DSL 5 left off. EQ is more or less in the center. <laughs> Interesting. So the uh, DSL-5 topped out at uh, 107, but kind of hung in there 104, 105 consistently. The DSL-20 topped out at uh, 112, which I thought it would have been louder, but I don't think decibels work linear in a linear way. I think they go up exponentially. So you got 5 dB extra with the DSL-20, and then I hooked up the DSL-5 into my 212 cab, and I thought because a dB meter measures pressure in the room that I'd get an increase of volume. But interestingly enough, the DSL-5 through the 2x12 cab was no louder on the meter. It still was about the 105 area. But for some reason, we hear an increase in volume as you add speakers. And maybe somebody can explain that because you know, with your ear responds to air pressure as well. And the more speakers you have pushing air, maybe we perceive that as uh, increased loudness or bigger sound. I don't know, sounds kind of a really interesting thing to think about, especially uh, speaker dynamics and how a singular cone can push your bass frequency and then on top of that so it's pulsing with the bass and on top of that it's also while it's pushing at a low frequency it's also vibrating at higher frequencies within that slower push <laughs> does that make sense it should so as it's pushing this way it's also vibrating at your uh, higher frequencies which is just really cool and then your ear perceives all that and good night it's it's just great okay so now interesting thing in the laney uh user manual for the irt 15 they have a cool little db uh table here and with the amount of db that you should expose yourself to for the number of hours before you have any hearing damage, which is good to know. And during that test, I put my earplugs in. It's the last thing you want to do is hurt your ears. That's why we love this so much, is because we can, uh, because we can hear it. And you don't want to come down with tinnitus, 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 and or start to have uh, hearing loss, lose the ability to hear the high end. I've started turning the treble down on my amps, just as a matter of habit. 
because you're or if you don't your ears are going to do that to filter out those high frequencies and that can start to cause hearing loss so i'm getting in the habit of starting with my trebles my highest cut initially and i end up enjoying it just as much uh, without my ears having to do the filtering and losing some of those that ability all right so for eight hours you can endure 90 db for at 92 db you can go six hours with that hearing loss at 95 db which was the um vacuum you can four hours exposed to 95 without hearing loss 97 is kind of that weed blower that leaf blower 97 to 100 three hours to two hours at 100 db if you're exposed more than two hours you start to have hearing loss uh, 102 an hour and a half 105 which is where our uh, dsl5 was kind of 105 you can endure that for an hour before you have hearing loss 110 for half an hour and then at 115 uh, a quarter hour or less so after 15 minutes exposed to 115 db you are going to start experiencing hearing loss interesting now i think the world record for a concert was the who way back when and i think they recorded a db level of over 200 uh, if I remember from uh, my little book of Guinness World Records when I was in fourth grade, it was one of my favorite books to read. And it seems like the, for a long time, The Who had the loudest concert level. 200 and some odd dB, which is uh, equal or uh, comparable to a jet engine, a jet taking off beside you. All right. So, interesting uh, stuff. The, uh, I really did expect the 2x12 to increase the volume, but according to the meter, it was flat the same. But I know that when I play through a 2x12, it sounds bigger. Uh, so that's an interesting kind of weird thing that had, takes place. Um, interesting. That's all I got to say. Um, they both have 12-inch speakers. I, would, I wonder if the 5 would be as loud with its 10 inch speaker that's stock and then another thing i thought about was pushing you can push the you know you can get more db at least five more db pushing it with a pedal like the flux drive or the ocd a clean boost pedal promises you five to ten db uh, and that would be another way to equal them out so you know maybe help make you decide help you with your decision of of which one you want to play the five gets plenty loud if you're a home player that's all you're going to need. Don't feel like you're going to get that much more out of the 20. But uh, if you do ever play at a school or a talent show or with a group of people or with a drummer, even if it's a light-handed drummer just for fun or a bass player, you're probably going to want the extra 5 dB that you get the D out of the uh, DSL 20. And it's got a little more, the tone's a little better as it gets louder, plus you have the resonance and presence controls which are a nice thing as well. Plus with the 20, you can stack it on a matching cab and run 216 loads out the back. So you can run the combo speaker and you can run another one by 12 that it's stacked on, which would be a really nice setup. That would be, that'd be really sweet. And that would push a lot of air. Sound big. All right, take care, wear your earplugs, turn that treble down, sub, share. Old guy jamming is out.